What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the best and most efficient way to complete your team affinity part one and team affinity part two. As always, drop a like on the video if you're new to the channel. Hit that red subscribe button down below and make sure your channel notifications is on. Roll to 10k. Once we hit 10k, we will be having a huge giveaway. Two gift cards, $50 each, both systems, and two full games. You can choose what games that you guys want for the giveaway. But no more talking. Let's get into today's ba -ba 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 banger. If you're looking for great gaming services, head on over to AHMLB and make sure you use code FAT for 5% off your order. So the first thing you want to do in your team affinity is try to get at least 70% on each tier before you move to the next one. Now, when the game first came out, I played Showdown for about three or four days and I hated it. So if any of y'all is having trouble with Showdown, don't worry. I got you. You don't have to do any Showdowns at all. Let me make that clear. You can put your guys in, complete the moments, complete the missions. It's going to take a little bit longer, but me, I always get to about 90 points before I do the Showdown. So let me show you right now. So when you go up to the top, I'm at 105 points. I usually get to about 90 points by doing my collections, getting as many as these done, and that's going to give you five each. Now, also, these exchanges Changes is going to give you 5, 10, 15, okay? And then the showdown, I like to do about three times each for each division. So that'll give me 15, 30, 45 to add on to this. So right now I'm doing two to three showdowns at a time. That's going to help me complete every single tier. Now I just started this two days ago because I was at about to 60% on each one of the divisions because I didn't want to do showdown. Two days ago, I started doing showdown. I was starting to do three or four showdowns in a day and then turn the console off and go back to grinding you can also just go into practice mode fill your team up with these mission players these are repeatable so if you play against the computer and you play seven innings quit out seven innings quit out and you put these players in people from the white Sox, indians tigers royals twins put them in your lineup they got to be in your binder somewhere or somebody with them teams you will get 10 10 10 10 repeatable till you get about 40 or 50 points look at the names get a notepad write down the people that you should have in the lineup you don't have to have everybody in the lineup but you you want to be able to get at least 20 points out of this so at least five of these in each section you want to be able to complete on top of the repeatable ones so five of them would be 20 points if you do the repeatable at least three times the innings very easy you can do computer you can do conquest just grinding the game you can do the collections and everything else to boost yourself to 90 or 100 points and then you can do your showdowns you're only 50 points away you only need 150 points each one of these tiers so if you can beat the conquest just two times and i'm gonna make it very easy and simple for everybody out there that is struggling with conquest i'm gonna give you the best breakdown possible so by tomorrow afternoon i should have all these complete i'm gonna grind probably another hour today and i'm also gonna give you guys video clips so stay tuned to the entire video i'm gonna give y'all video clips and walk y'all through exactly what to look for how to draft your team and all that good stuff is gonna be later in the video so stay tuned after you drop a like on the video i have my team and then i have the team affinity squad so this team affinity squad i got all these people in here that i need to get hits extra base hits and then i got my pitching set up where i need to have uh cincinnati reds players or oakland a's or brewers all them type of players is people that you want to have it don't matter the overall you are going to be playing the computer okay so the showdown is only hard to people that is impatient i repeat the showdown is only hard to people that are impatient but we're going to get into the best way to do the showdown so if we go right here to showdown we go to team affinity where i'm at right now i'm at six points out of 12 i just beat the boss now we're gonna go to my squad one key thing that i found out i suck that showdown so what i found out is better is it don't matter about the hit power and all that like people tell you draft as many left-handed betters as possible okay so you can see look at my lineup left hand left hand left hand left hand left hand right left 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 right i got two rights i was skipping over people with 90 power right 95 power left if he was a right-handed better for some reason you won't 
your slider, you want your off-speed pitches to go to the left side of the plate. Now, it might just be me, but some other people that I talk to, it does help you out being a left-handed batter or switch hitter. Now, if you get a draft where you only got four left-handed batters, that's okay. Put them at the top of the lineup. You're going to be able to see the ball way better, and you're going to be able to get the pitcher's timing down way better. Now, once it goes to pitchers, you look at the first two pitches that he have, and that's going to tell you everything that you need to know, okay? So, perfect perfects, you get line outs. I know how it works. If the pitcher starts off with a two-seam or a four-seamer as his main pitches, he's going to be throwing you a lot of fastballs. If he starts off with a sinker, circle change, change up, anything like that as his main pitchers, and his four-seam and two-seam is way down at number four, number three, or number five, he's going to be throwing you a lot of off-speed pitches, but guess what? He's going to be throwing you a lot of balls not in the strike zone. So when you see somebody without a fastball as their main pitch, you can sit for the second and third strike every single time. Don't even start swinging that stuff that you think is a strike. Let him get further in his count, second pitch, third pitch, or fourth pitch. Then all you have to do if they have them type of pitching sequences is keep your PCI from knees and below, okay? Keep your PCI from knees and below. And I'm going to break that down with the footage. Now, another way to be able to beat Team Affinity, because you want to get Jackie Robinson to your team, and at the end, you're still going to have to buy six to seven players, and that's just how it is. So if you're using my flip method, if you're grinding out Conquest, if you're doing all the things that you should be doing, you should be in a good spot. So the Conquest map, even if you're having trouble, you should get these done. You can see, I'm new to the game. First time ever playing the game, and I went through and I did all these conquests. So once Team Affinity 2 is released, you should have this all the way complete. If you at least at 60% right now, you can be at 100% in each one of these categories in the next two days. And you have three days total before the next one comes out. So you want to get on top of it right now. So I'm going to roll some clips and I'm going to walk y'all through the best method to be able to beat Showdown. And after season two drops, season one will still be available for you to get Jackie Robinson. So don't get all worried and scared. It will be available so if you only 100% in a lot of them but then you 80 or 90% in the other ones this showdown tip is going to help you you will have the last couple tiers that you need done in about an hour and a half I guarantee it okay the simplest way to break this down number one R2 or right trigger that's going to pull up his pitch combos if you see anything but a fastball as his top two pitches you want to be patient I know it's hard but you want to be patient if you see a change up in a sinker at the top he's going to try to pitch you low in the zone eight out of ten times if you see a fastball at the top he's gonna be pitching you a lot of fastballs so let the first pitch go by pick up the speed on the fastball because that is gonna be his best pitch with the most velocity in the most control then you can just sit back and pay attention another thing is click the right analog in and that's gonna pull up the shift now if you see that they are shifting on the play that's going to be for them to trap you into double plays and easy lineouts. You want to make sure that you are getting as close to a perfect hit or you want to be late on the pitch. You don't want to be early on the pitch when you are playing showdown unless the guy has fastballs as his number one pitch. If he has anything off speed, circle change, change up or sinker then you want to be sitting your PCI low. If he has a fastball or anything like that as his top pitch, that's what you're going to get eight out of 10 times and you want to sit your PCI from the knees up. Okay. So you can see I'm sitting there being patient, waiting on any off speed pitch because this guy is showing me his sinker or his changeup is his top two pitches. Being a left handed better, he can't throw his slider to the inside because it's going to be slower and I have more time to react and he can't throw his curve balls because I am a left handed better. So it's going to come to me and I'm going to have more time to react. That's the difference in showdown. When you first get the game, you're trying to draft every Everybody with power, right-handed batters, left-handed batters, you don't care. If you draft all left-handed batters or switch hitters, they will be on the opposite side and the pitch will always come to you so you can have an advantage. If y'all rocking with me, you know I got y'all. Drop a like on the video, roll to 10K. Big giveaways on the way, all for y'all. Thank you.